And there's a lot of other announcements in your bulletins. I just want to say thank you to Kevin. As always, he does such a fine job of preaching. I feel a little bit uh, like he should be up here more often, but he's preached for the month, and he's, he gets a break now, and I'm back at it. And thank you, Kevin. It's, a, it's such an encouraging time to sit there and listen and be fed, and appreciate it very much. And we'll continue to share the pulpit uh, if God allows, and I, I think it works very well, and I pray you guys, uh, it works for you as well. 2020, as Kevin has introduced the year and through the month of January, 2020 vision, I love that thought. We talked about it last fall. You know, we got this year 2020 in many places that you, we visit uh, the, I think the first Sunday of the year, yes, first Sunday of the year at the church we visited, we had a really good encouraging message from the preacher as we were on vacation and very uplifting. And as I listen to that and then I come home from vacation and I get to listen to Kevin and just putting some things together about 2020, I don't have 2020 vision anymore. I had lost my 2020 vision when I was about 25 years old. And I immediately applied for handicap license plates, and they told me I wasn't eligible. <laughs> My eyes haven't got any worse. So here I am 30 years later, still pass the driver's test, still do very well, even with a CDL. Um, my eyes don't focus and unfocus as fast. The elasticity is leaving them as we get older, and you guys know what I mean. Some of you do. And I think that same thing happens in our Christian walk. Our ability to react to things that are good and things that are bad get numbed. And we don't share in the things that are great and good in life. But we get a whole bunch of sharing when things are bad. Don't we? I, that's just the way life is. Every, a lot of the many things we hear and see are negative. And it invades us, and it gets into our system. And if you're a Debbie Downer type person, any of you in here that way? Oh, no volunteers. I'll pick some out. If we're that kind of person where that negative thought process gets us down, it happens to all of us. I know it does. It makes us worry. It gives us things, that emotions that we shouldn't have. And if we are continually fed that negative <clears throat> vibe from life, we become very negative towards God. And when bad things happen, we abandon Him. Keeping the light in the darkness is what vision is about. Keeping the light. Keeping the reason that I'm here. Keeping the reason that I'm doing the things that we do gives us hope and gives us life. It's so great to celebrate life. I share with this story many times, and I have many times in my life, about Scrooge and what a transformation happened to the man. And, and I've thought about that many times. As old Chuck Dickens wrote that thing, wasn't that his name? Charles? Close. Charlie, how's that? I know it came from the basis of a transformation that Jesus brings to our lives. And if we can focus on the great part of life, that is the beginning. That is only the beginning, but that is the beginning to the escape of the darkness and our ability to really move into the kingdom of God here. Because if we stay in, in, in the negative side here, even though we may have given our life to Christ and have, do, are doing the things that brings us salvation, if we can't escape the darkness, it's not going to send us to hell, but it is not going to make us what God really needs me to be here. And that is a child of light. A child that is holy 
And that's the basis of what I want to share with you in the near future from the pulpit. What is it to be holy, a child of light, a child worthy of glory? Definition of holy is all over the place. You do what you want, find what you want to find a definition. I, I just boiled all of them that I have found because they're different and I don't care where you go because there is no true explanation. I boiled it down to this, worthy of being in God's glory. There are two places in Scripture that men got to be in God's glory, in His presence, and they are vivid stories. There's another story of a man who wanted to be in His presence here on earth and was told, you can't or you'll be incinerated. So he says, you can look at my back. That's the story of Moses on the mountain. But we have these other two that I want to share with you today and start from that point and make my life, and I pray encourage to make your life, a life that is worthy of glory, holy, dedicated to God, separated. There's all kinds of descriptions of what holy is. The simplicity of it is this. When we are holy people, we will be allowed in God's presence. And that's the goal, is it not? That is the goal. Let's read the first one. They're kind of lengthy, not horrible, but some. I kid all the time about having the, being in the Lord's army. And, you know, people ask me about, they ask you too if you have any... If anybody in the military, if you're in the military or in the police, and I always say I'm in the Lord's Army, and sometimes they'll give you the discount. Jack brought me a hat yesterday. He got it somewhere. You got it. Can you get that picture up there, Mike? Look at there. Can you read that? It says God's Army. It's over there. I don't wear bonnets very often, but I'll wear that one. If you want to know where it came from, ask Jack. I don't know where he got it. That's pretty cool. I want to be in the Lord's army. I want to be that person that whether or not I got the hat on is recognized as a child of light. Right? Let's read this story of a sinful man, just like I am, just like you are, who got to be in the presence of God and got to witness that. Turn over to Isaiah. You guys, most of you know this chapter. It says in chapter 6, and we're going to read the first 11 verses of the first actual person that we have recorded that got to be where God is. Not God coming to earth, but got to go where God is, into His throne room. And you're going to notice some words that are very familiar in both these stories. Isaiah chapter 6, 1 through 11. In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne. Capital L-O-R-D translates, goes back to Exodus chapter 3, which translates into when Moses asked, who am I supposed to tell Pharaoh sent me? And right there out of the bush, Jesus said, I am sent you. And from that point on, it has been translated, capital L-O-R-D. We find it again here in Isaiah, capital L-O-R-D. Same word. I saw the Lord sitting on a throne, lofty and exalted, the train of His robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above Him, each having six wings, and two He covered His face, with two He covered His feet, and with two He flew. The one called out to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of His glory." The foundations of the thresholds trembled at the sound of him who called out while the temple was filling with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips. I live among people of unclean lips. My eyes have seen the King and the Lord of hosts. And then one of the seraphim flew to me with a burning coal in his hand, which he had taken from the altar with tongs. And he touched my mouth with it, and behold... This has touched your lips, and your iniquity has been taken away, and your sin is forgiven. And then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and whom will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. 
And he said, go and tell this people, keep on listening, but do not perceive. Keep on looking, but do not understand. Render the hearts of this people insensitive, their ears dull, their eyes dim, lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their hearts and returned and be healed. Then I said, Lord, how long? Three words. Lord, how long? And he answered, until the cities are devastated and without inhabitant, houses are without people, and the land is utterly desolate. There's about 12 sermons in those 11 verses. And we'll get to eight of them down the road. Let's just digest a little bit. How long? I brought that out intentionally. We get to the, I get to the point, maybe you don't. Sometimes I get to the point in life when I think, how long am I going to do this? How long do I put up with this? And whatever, you fill in the blank, whatever this is. As Alex said in his meditation, everything and everybody has the blank to fill in. Lord, how long? What's the Lord's answer? And I love it, and I need it, and it got me. Until there's nobody left to listen. Changed my mind on some things. Until there's no one left to listen. There is no end, is the answer. There's no end. Isaiah gets to be in the throne room and he hears these things flying. They're covering their eyes because even they, in their position, can't tolerate the glory of God all the time, or maybe none of the time. And just as the priests had to take their shoes off to go into the Holy of Holy, the things are covering their feet because they're unclean as well. And with two of the wings they fly. And one of them knew Isaiah's problem. And he fixed it as quickly as he could. One of the next things that I'm going to share on Sunday nights, if God allows is about angels and how they work in our lives. This thing called a seraphim took the cold, took it, you heard it, you know what, touched him and said, okay, you're good. You can be here. Isaiah was given holiness. He was given the ability to be in the presence of glory. His sins were forgiven, and he had become clean. Story number two, Revelation, as John writes in Revelation 22. I'm sorry, we're going to go to Revelation 4 first. Go to Revelation chapter 4. Again, first 11 verses. The second story in Scripture of this exact same thing, only from a different perspective at a different time, and John writes, After these things I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first vo voice which I heard, like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me, and that's not Keaton, I kid all the time. Did you guys hear him talking during the sound service? Even Julian could have heard him. He had a voice which I heard like the sound of a trumpet speaking with me and came up, come up here and I will show you what must take place after these things. And immediately I was in the spirit, John writes, and behold, the throne was standing in heaven and one, capital one, sitting on the throne. And he who was sitting on, was sitting was like jasper stone, sardis in appearance, and there was a rainbow around the throne like an emerald in appearance. And around the throne were 24 thrones. 
And upon the thrones I saw twenty-four elders sitting clothed in white garments, in golden crowns on their heads. I can only imagine, I can only guess, I can only think that this possibly would be the twelve tribes and the twelve apostles. Don't know. Verse 5. From the throne proceeded flashes of lightning and sounds and peals of thunder. And there were seven lamps of fire burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. And before the throne there was, as it were, a sea of glass like crystal. And in the center and around the throne four living creatures, full of eyes in front and behind, and the first creature was like a lion, and the second creature like a calf. And the third creature had a face like that of a man, and the fourth creature was like a flying eagle. And the four living creatures, each one of them having six wings, are full of eyes around and within. And day and night they did not cease to say, Holy, Holy, Holy is the Lord God, the Almighty, who was and who is and who is to come. And when the living creatures gave glory and honor and thanks to Him who sits on the throne, to Him who lives forever and ever, the twenty-four elders will fall down before Him who sits on the throne and will worship Him who lives forever and ever and will cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Worthy art thou, O Lord, and our God, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou didst create all things, and because of thy will they existed and were created. Holiness is bringing to my mind and bringing to my spirit who am I. I. Who is he? And how do I get to be in his presence? Holiness. Something that many fe people feel is unachievable, which is such a sat satanic thought. Because that's exactly what Satan does when he makes us think that it's unachievable, is he wins. He steals us and He steals our spirit and our hope and our desires. Our goal is to be able, my goal, and I pray it's yours, I know it is, is to be there sometime in the future. Don't know what minute or day or year that will be. But I will be there in that place where Jesus is. I don't think it'll be this place. This is what I think. I think it'll be the new heaven and the new earth, but, we're, but it'll be similar to this place. But the thought of being able to share holiness, to share in the glory of God, worthy of glory, am I, and Christians, we've got to ask this, Am I seeing the world the way I need to now? Have I lost the elasticity in my eyes to determine what's good and what's bad and where I need to st stick up for Jesus and where I need to stick up for the saving grace of Jesus for someone who's lost, where I need to interfere into my family's affairs, where I need to say something at work, where I need to get rid of things in my life that are dragging me away from Christ instead of toward Christ. All too often we let things just continually steal us. I'm just as guilty as anybody. And it's not sinful things, it's our time. And as we get older, I'm getting older. Anybody getting older this morning? No? I know you get younger when you leave here. I'm convinced of that, unless you're a little bitty when you leave here, but most of us are going to get younger when we leave here. I'm getting older. I don't function as well as I used to. 
I got a really nice, you can't see it from there, but this finger two days ago was as red as it red gets because I mashed it working on a, uh, what do they call those bombs on the side of the road in Iraq? Impromi improvised. I, yeah, I got one. I, I've been working with two of them this week. They were about this long. They're about that big around. And they had 60,000 pounds stored up inside of them, and I had to release it, and me and Alex did that. Pretty scary. I wasn't ready to go meet Jesus, but I was sure thinking about it. <laughs> we in our lives have those moments all the time. I'm getting, I don't react the way I used to. That thing scared me. Yeah. That thing scared me. I've been to some scary things in life. I never had my hands wrapped around something that if it comes unglued, it's going to kill me. But that's what it would do. Holiness is the essence of us having no fear of life. We sang that song. We sing it all the time. No guilt in life, no fear in death. I pray we grab those words and take them to our heart and know what's going to happen. It isn't going to be someone else. It's going to be me. It's going to be you. And we're going to be need. We need that ability to be worthy of glory in our life. John got to see it. Isaiah got to see it. I want to see it. I want you to see it. I want us to get rid of the nonsense and get back to the point where nothing matters except what Jesus tells the smart aleck lawyer. After the Good Samaritan story, the smart aleck lawyer, who you just want to take a club and hit, asked Jesus, who's my neighbor? What's the commandment? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your soul. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Our holiness, our worthy of glory, yes, I have to be responsible for myself. And guess what? God tells me over and over again, i got to be worried about my neighbor. Meaning, i got to be about God's business. Revelation 22, we got to end this. Time to go home. We'll do it some more later. Revelation 22, 10 through 16. Listen to Jesus' words as John records them. Revelation 22, 10 through 16. John is writing, and he said to me, this is the angel that John is being escorted with, do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book for the time is near. He says that to me and you too. Don't keep it quiet. Let the one who does wrong still do wrong. Let the one who is filthy still be filthy. Let the one who is righteous still practice righteousness. And let the one who is holy keep himself holy. The angel says to John, meaning just as Peter writes in the second book, in the third chapter, just like it's been forever, people will be given in marriage, people will be going to work, people will be living their lives, but the time is near. And we are here at the time. Don't keep it to yourself. And then Jesus says these words, verse 12 and 13, Behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to render 
or to give to every man according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Verse 14, Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter to the gates and to the city. Outside of the dogs and the sorcerers and the immoral persons and the murderers and idolaters and everyone who loves and practices lying. I, Jesus, verse 16, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bright and morning star. He is the light. He is the glory. He is the answer. Thank you, Alex, for your communion. Earlier in this book, it talks about the tree of life in two different places. Come on up, worship team. It talks about the necessity of being washed and cleansed, just as we've just read. And it talks about how important it is that the saints are clothed in white. And they are clothed in white because they are righteous. Holiness is real. It's not fictitious. Holiness is something you and I all have. Every time we come into contact with the blood of Jesus Christ, we are cleansed of our sin, just as Isaiah was cleansed by the fire. Every time, starting with our baptism, as we are reborn, and every time we meet in the house of God for the purpose of worshiping God, every time we come around this table and divide the loaf and the cup, we are made holy again, cleansed from the darkness of the world. We are made to see Jesus. I pray, and I pray for all of us, for the church and all of us as individuals, that in 2020, I live it. I just don't hear it, and my eyes and my ears not work, and I just don't see it. My ears and eyes are dimmed, but I live it. But not only can that holiness be in this house and in your house, but it'll be in your neighbor's house, whoever that neighbor is. This morning, if you do not have the forgiveness that comes through the blood of Jesus, we want you to have that. We want to share with you about that. And we ask if you need to have that in your life, you get a hold of us after church. Whether you want to walk up front or just find someone in the house you can talk to that you know. We need that in our lives. Let's stand and sing this hymn of decision.